All right, so today I'm gonna to show you guys how to do 32-bit HDR image processing, and it's going to be a process that's going to take place between Photoshop and Lightroom. So let's get started. So, Okay, so I have my two images that I'm gonna to blend together. Usually I do three, but in this case I only took two. So these images are shot so that they are two, stop, two full stops apart from each other and we're going to combine them using Photoshop and then we're going to do all the fine tuning in Adobe Lightroom. So first step to processing all of this, you pick the two images that you want that are spaced out properly within the spectrum of your exposure. So this is going to be the image used for my shadows to bring my shadows up and this is going to be the image to bring my highlights down so that it's a more subtle image and it looks a little bit more natural to the human eye instead of having a very high contrast image like we do right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check the white balance. It's important that you have you set your white balance between both images so that they both match when it comes to editing them in Lightroom, or in Photoshop I should say. So once you synchronize the white balance between the two, I also go ahead and I will remove the sharpening because Lightroom will automatically add sharpening and I do not want it to over sharpen. And I don't want it to sharpen it twice. So we're gonna take the sharpening all the way down to zero. So right now we're starting with an image that is pretty much raw straight out of the camera. There's no adjustment to the exposure or anything. The only thing that we touched have been the white balance and the sharpening. So we set the white balance to what we want so it's consistent between the images, and then we take the sharpening out so it doesn't overcook our image once we go through Photoshop and back in Lightroom. They're uncropped, white balances are all correct on them, and there's no sharpening. So what we're gonna do is we're going to right click on the stack, and we're going to edit in, uh, it's gonna be Photoshop, and it's gonna be merged to HDR. So it's gonna bring the window up. When you process these images in Photoshop, Photoshop is going to take the information from your highlights and your shadows and bring them together and make it a more gradual tone or a more gradual shift from your highlights to your midtones to your shadows. So your underexposed image it's going to use the information from the sky so that your skies don't burn out. And for the overexposed images, it's going to use all the information from the shadows and it's gonna stitch it all together and you're gonna have a much more gradual shift in tones as opposed to having two, two very high polarized looks where you'd have really dark shadows and really, 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 really bright highlights. If you're here, you probably know that, but I figured I may as well add it into the video. All right, so when we load into Photoshop, it's gonna give you this basic window. It's going to be set to 8-bit and it's gonna give you all this these different sliders where you can change everything and it can work. However, that's not the name of the game. This is not my personal preference for these, for editing my HDR images because it kind of makes them look a little bit more artificial. And I really like a natural and subtle image. It's just the way that I process things. So 32 bit HDR images really suits my editing style. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the top window up here it's probably gonna be set to either 18-bit or 16-bit off the default, and we're gonna to go to 32-bit. Essentially what it's going to do is it's gonna remove all those options that you just had available to yourself, and it's only gonna give you the ability to check this box for complete toning in Adobe Camera Raw, and you would like to have that checked, so it brings up the Camera Raw. That's where we're gonna do the first layer of adjustments, essentially. So we're gonna go down to Tone and ACR, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to take the highlights down a good bit, and then I'm just gonna bring up the whole entire overall exposure up. And now I'm gonna bring my shadows up. And yes, it's gonna look flat. It's the name of the game. For my, my personal editing process, I will make the image look really, really, really flat in Photoshop and then I will do all of my fine adjustments in Lightroom so that I can have multiple edits. So bring down my highlights a little bit. 
Now I'm going to bring my, my exposure a little bit. And yes, it does look a little bit flat, but it's all right. All right, so I'm done adjusting everything in Photoshop because I only really touched the three sliders. Occasionally I'll touch the white balance, but I usually like to set the white balance right off the bat when I'm in Lightroom. So now that I'm done with my exposure, my highlights, and my shadows, I will push OK, and it's going to compress your image. Now that my image is compressed, I'm going to go ahead and save it, and I'm just going to name it after the sequence that I shot the photos at. And this is going to be number three. I'm going to save it as a TIFF file. I usually use a PSD or a TIFF, but for this case, I'm just going to use a TIFF file. It's a larger file and it includes more information. All right, so once we save our image in Photoshop, we can go right back to Lightroom where it's going to preload your image from Photoshop. And now we can do all of our fine adjustments. So what I do is I'll bring my exposure to where I want to look like at the end because this is going to be your final exposure and edit. So this is where I'm going to add all my contrast back because I do like having contrast myself. It's my shooting style. So this is where I'll do it all. And this is where I'll export the final image before I publish it to whatever platform I'm putting it on. So this is all done by personal taste. As any editing is, this is the step where you really see your final image to come together and kind of take on a new life have a better look and by now you should see that the, the image looks a lot more lifelike than when you first came out of the camera with a raw file that was really really flat and it had really bright highlights or really really dark shadows it's just now it looks like a, a real life image all right so now i'm going to come down and i'm going to do my my final sharpening so the image is going to look as soft as it came out of the camera, which is perfectly okay. So we're gonna do all of our sharpening now. So I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit and now I'm gonna do my masking to see where in my image that I'm not gonna have sharpening because I really don't need the whole entire image to be sharpened. So if you hold down the Alt key when you're moving the slider, it will give you the, the mask, which is the black and white you saw. So now, what this is essentially doing is applying the sharpening to everything that's rougher, that's not smooth. So my sky is going to avoid all the sharpening as well as the paint of the car, but all the grass, all the ground, it's all going to obtain all the sharpening that I just chose to add back. All right, now that I'm done with all my processing of the image, this is where I'll finally go ahead and do all my cropping. All right, so it's important to me for my processing that I do all my cropping last because it gives me all the real estate of the image and it weeds out as little as I can so that I have all the image that I need. So once I do finally decide what kind of mediums I wanna publish the image on, I can do any kind of crop that I want or it's gonna open up the possibility or leave it as open as it was originally because I didn't cut out any pixels. It's gonna have most all the image. Photoshop just does a tiny lick of cropping when you when it aligns it for the HDR, and it just kind of takes a fine cut around the outside of it. But that's not a big deal. But when you start cropping before you go into Photoshop, you lose a lot of integrity of the image. So you're stuck at that resolution, and you're also stuck with a smaller image for the edit. If you ever want to make it larger and obtain all the information on the outskirts that you cropped out, it means you have to do a whole full new edit and it's just more complicated and inconvenient really. So here is my final image. I hope this video was very helpful to you. It's a pretty simple process. I hope you enjoy playing around with it. It's all what you make of it. The more you do it, the more you become used to it and the better images you will make. Let me know if there's any questions you have about it or my shooting style or processing, whatever. I'm more than happy to help. I do a lot of automotive work, so I know a lot of different processes that are related to that. So let me, down, let me know in the comments down below so I can know what kind of videos to make next if anybody wants videos. Also, 
feel free to check out my social media. I have Instagram and Facebook, and I'll link those down below. Also, if you decide that you're gonna post some images using this process, feel free to tag me with the hashtag entity of speed. Thank you.